probably what's lesser known by many people is the ongoing educational work of Rabbis for Human Rights, an attempt by our rabbis to get our values and our message across, the message of tolerance, the message of coexistence, the message that our tradition is about compassion and, learn and loving and tolerance. While I was chairperson, it was the 50th anniversary since the founding of the State of Israel, and we were looking for a special project and I got excited about the idea of relating to the De Israeli Declaration of Independence as a sacred Jewish text. It's a text that most Israelis don't even relate to. Um, they don't know what's in the Israeli Declaration of Independence, and especially the parts of it that promise uh, full equal rights to all the citizens based on the vision of the prophets as uh, we have it in the Bible. That struck me as a especially appropriate way to celebrate Israel's 50th anniversary. So when our rabbis get up in classrooms, in front of teachers, in front of high school students, and talk about incredibly important issues of today and how Judaism must confront them, it's crucial for a young Israeli, often a young secu secular Israeli, to understand that rabbis can stand for justice, can stand for compassion, can stand for peace. It's in some ways the most important work we do. To change attitudes in Israeli society, you have to be committed for the long haul. You don't see the fruits of that labor in a day, in a week, or even a year. That's the work of changing a, a generation, and, uh, and that's the work that we're committed to. We planted trees in a, in a forest burnt down by Palestinian arsonists in an unrecognized Bedouin village with a Jalin Bedouin in a poor Jewish neighborhood fighting to save its last space, a bit of green space from the developers. And, and most of all, in the territories, where places where trees have either been uprooted or whether areas that are in threat of being expropriated. Although it is true that there are real security issues, that there have been cases where trees have been used as cover for Palestinian terrorists to, to, to fire upon Israelis or to throw stones, uh, and that, that we must take these concerns very seriously, uh, that we know that many trees have been cut down far from any roads, far from any place where they would be posing a, a real security danger. That Many trees have not been cut down by uh, security forces, but by citizens, Israeli Jewish citizens, acting as vigilantes. I can't begin to explain how blown away I am by the fact that so many people have so much belief in what we're doing that they've come and joined us to do this. In the midst of the terror attacks that took place this week, in the midst of the hatred, in the midst of the fear and anger on both sides, a stronger voice, a voice of love, of hope, of reconciliation and restitution prevailed. My father and my grandfather grew trees before more 100 years. They cut it in one minute. In one, in, in one minute, Bible dozer, they cut the trees. All the land here is a culture. We can't live without a culture here. The, the trees, we take it from oil. We take oil from uh, this piece. Uh, our father and father, father, or all father plant uh, these trees. Tell your uh, friend, this is a sign of peace, not for uh, war. They can see that we are from outside. We're Jews, Israelis, and non-Israelis who want to help. And they see another side of the Jewish community, the Jewish world. 
You are come from a far land to to here only to help me, uh, not uh, to anything. Uh, we will not forget that work. I believe that this olive tree campaign does make a difference. And we've seen over the months of this intifada that if we're still not, even if we are still dealing with a tidal wave of hatred on both sides of the divide, Palestinians and Israelis, of suspicion, of mistrust, of anger, of trauma, that on both sides we've started to see some small thaw. And this olive tree campaign has been a major symbol, not only uh, to pe people around the world, but to Palestinians.